Hello viewers, today we will discuss the topic population trends and challenges in China. China has been the world's most populous country for centuries. It is no surprise that China's huge population, tumultuous demographic history and possible future have attracted the world's attention. The country's growing economic strength combined with its demographic might ensures it will stay in the limelight for a long time to come. The country has undergone enormous social, economic and political changes over the past 50 years. But many of the issues that Chinese society faces today are also closely connected to past demographic changes. Global Population Trends the population of the world is increasing about 50 million every year and there is no expectation of an early reduction in the rate of growth. This large increase in the world population has occurred despite a marked decline in the growth rate of the world population which fell to 1.2% in the year 2000. The world's urban population is projected to grow by 1.8% a year from 2000 to 2030. The world population has increased to 7.2 billion in 2014. In 2014, the total fertility rates for the world have shown a downward trend at a fast pace. Life expectancy, on the other hand, has shown an upward trend which has risen from 64.8 years in 1990 to 1995 to 70 years in 2010 to 2015. That is a gain of 5.2 years. International migration has been increasing over the past years. In 2013, the number of international migrants has risen up to 232 million from 154 million in 1990. Aging has also become a world phenomenon and the share of old people rose from 9% in 1944 to 12% in 2014. The Table 1 shows the changes in the world population and parallel changes in the population of China. Alongside the changes in the proportion of China to world population are shown over the years. World population reached 7,000 million in 2011 from 3,000 million in 1959. For China, the population was 662 million in 1959 and almost doubled to 1,347 million in 2011. The proportion of China's population to world population decreased from around 22% in 1959 to 10% in 2011. World population and that of China has been increasing over the years, but China's proportion to world population is seen to be declining. Population change in China At present, China is still the most populous country in the world. By the end of 2011, China's population reached 1.35 billion, accounting for 19.2% of the world's total population. The results of the six national census conducted in 2010 reveal that China's demographic situation has witnessed fundamental changes from 2000 to 2010. The average annual growth rate of population was only 0.57%, far lower than 1.07% in the previous decade. Meanwhile, the population structure has also changed considerably, from the second national census in 1982 to the sixth one in 2010. 
the proportion of children aged from 0 to 14 in the total population fell from 33.6% to 16.6% and that of elderly people aged above 60 rose from 7.6% to 13.3%. Trends in Fertility Between the 1960s and 1980s, China experienced one of the most rapid and impressive declines in fertility ever recorded in a national population. It fell from 5.8 in 1970 to below 1.5 in 2010. Fertility began to decline in the 1950s and 1960s, probably because the Chinese government began to pay attention to urban fertility rates and because couples began to want fewer children. Fertility declines accelerated in the 1970s and early 1980s, influenced by government birth planning policies that began in the 1970s and became more restrictive by 1980s. Although the number of annual births continued to increase because ever larger cohorts of young women were entering childbearing ages during these years, the average number of children per woman has remained low for more than a decade. Fertility has fallen much faster and farther in urban than in rural areas. Urban and rural patterns diverged in the 1960s as urban rates headed downward throughout the country. Rural rates did not begin to decline until the 1970s and lagged behind urban declines by as much as 10 years in some areas, especially in western provinces. Rural fertility has remained higher in part because the government has allowed many rural families to have a second child. A survey in 2001 showed that the TFR in urban areas was 1.22 children per woman, significantly lower than the rural TFR of 1.98. The figure 1 shows the trends in the birth rate and death rate in China between 1951 and 2000. To start with, it can be seen that in 1951, Death rate is lower at 20 per thousand and birth rate is high at around 37 per thousand. The birth rate reaches a downward peak somewhere between 1960 to 1963, where it fell to around 18. Thereafter, it also reached an upward peak in the following years when it was greater than 40, almost touching 45. After this point, it declined consistently and reached a little above 15 per thousand in 2000. The death rate reached its upward peak of 25 between 1960 to 1963, after which it declined and settled at a much lower level than the birth rate in 2000. Trends in Mortality China's mortality has declined dramatically over the past 50 years, especially in the early years of the People's Republic. The official death rate in 1953 was 14 deaths per 1,000 people, but it was probably much higher because mortality was chronically underestimated. The official death rate had dropped below 8 by 1970 and below 7 by 2000. China's mortality fell in part due to increased stability and public order following the turmoil of civil wars World War II and partial Japanese occupation in the 1930s and 1940s. In 1980, life expectancy at birth for both sexes was 64 years and by 2001, it had risen to 71.8 years, according to official estimates. Infant mortality has also declined dramatically, although the actual magnitude of decline is uncertain because data on infant deaths are incomplete. The most reliable estimates suggest that infant mortality rate fell from 139 infant deaths per 1,000 live births in 1954 to about 41 infant deaths per 1,000 in the late 1990s. China's death rate will reach an all-time high in 2030, 
as the population ages. The figure too shows the infant mortality rates per thousand in China between 1945 to 2000. It can be clearly seen through the declining height of bars that the rate has been declining. It was around 200 in 1945 and declined afterwards. It reached up to 50 and reduced to almost its half in 2000. This indicates better health and improving life expectancy. The table 2 shows the changes in population parameters in China from 1955 to 2015. It can be seen that the percentage change in population over last year was 0.52% in 2015 and the corresponding figure for 1955 was 1.93%. The number of net migrants have increased from 33,000 to 3,60,000 in 2015. A negative sign prefix with them means that more people were leaving the country than entering it over all the years shown. The median age has increased from 22 years in 1955 to 37 years in 2015. This shows a trend towards an aging society. The fertility rates on the other hand have declined, confirming to the theory of demographic transition. The number of children born per woman has almost reduced three times from 6.11 in 1955 to 1 1.55 in 2015. The density of population has shown a rapidly increasing trend and more than doubled to 147 per square kilometer in 2015. The Chinese economy is also rapidly urbanizing due to which more than 50% of the population was residing in urban areas in 2015. The share of China in world population has declined to around 19% in 2015 from 23.7%. Trends in Migration China has been experiencing the largest migration of population in human history. The results of the six national census show that the China had a floating population of 2021 million. The massive movement of population has become one of the most important population phenomena with an impact on China's socio-economic development. The predominant trend is for the population to flow from the countryside to cities and from the central and western regions to the eastern regions. The highly dynamic population movement is not only changing the distribution of China's population in rural and urban areas, but also influencing its regional distribution. The Table 3 shows the pattern of change in life expectancy at birth in China for the years mentioned. Life expectancy was 35 years in 1949 and increased to 69 years in 1985 after which it declined slightly to 68. However, it soared again to 71 years in 2000. Trends in Population Composition China's rural-urban distribution of the population has undergone a historic change. By the end of 2011, China's urban population had accounted for 51.3% of its total population, which means that China is no longer a country with a predominantly rural population. The rate increased by one percentage each year between 1990 and 2000 and has risen by 1.3 percentage points each year in the past decade. By the end of 2012, 52.3% of China's population had been living in urban areas. The pace of China's urbanization is impressive. In 1980, just 19.4% of China's total population lived in urban areas and in 2030, it will rise to 63.9%. At that time, the country will have nearly 890 million urban residents. Most of China's larger cities are located on or near the coast. Shanghai will still be China's largest city in 2030, though its population has been falling 
since 2004. In 2010, Shanghai had 1.4% of all urban residents and by 2030, it will account for less than 1%. China is one of the fastest aging countries in the world. At the end of 2011, 9.1% of the population in the Chinese mainland was aged 65 or over. Since 2000, two major changes have occurred in population aging. Firstly, aging has speeded up and secondly, the speed is higher than it is expected. The proportion of population aged 65 or over is likely to exceed 15% in 2027, 20% 20 in 2035 and 25% in 2050, reaching the level in developed countries. With the acceleration of population aging and slowing growth of working age population, China's total dependency ratio bottomed out at 0.38 in 2011 and began to rise slowly afterwards. It is expected to reach 0.4 in 2020 and exceed 0.5 in 2033. According to the projection of United Nations, without a substantial rebound in fertility rate, China's dependency ratio will continue to grow even after 2050 and reach up to 0.8 in 2070. That means every four working people will have to support at least two aged people and one child by 2070. China's population is steadily aging. By 2030, the median age will reach 42 years, that is 3.2 years greater than in 2010 and 19.5 years more than in 1980. The figure 3 shows the changes in Chinese population in three age groups of young 0 to 14, working age 15 to 59 and old 60 plus. These are layered starting from bottom upwards. It can be seen that from 1953 to 2000, the population aged 0 to 14 has declined from 36 to 23 percent of the total population and is projected to decline further to 16 percent in 2050. Compared to this, the population aged 15 to 59 has increased by 10 percentage points between the given period but is projected to decline in 2050, which can pose a challenge for China's economy. Lastly, it can be seen that the old population increased by 3 percentage points, that is from 7 to 10 percent and it is projected to increase further to 27 percent because of the trends towards aging. Population challenges in China China is susceptible to number of challenges because of its demographic trends. Rapidly aging population The Chinese government is now starting to worry about the problem of population aging, which will occur very quickly due to the rapid decline in fertility and mortality. Apart from a small fraction of the urban population who work for state-owned enterprises, all people in China do not receive a pension. Most of the elderly rely on support from family if they are lucky or must carry on working to maintain their income. But with the increasing cost of living and rise of individualism in the wake of socio-economic change, family solidarity is weakening. Family composition has also changed, making solidarity more difficult. Growing gender ratio imbalances China retains traits of patriarchal Confucian society in which girls and women still occupy a marginal position. Sons are preferred because they offer a range of advantages. It is through sons that the family lineage is continued and it is sons who look after their parents in their old age and provide them with financial support. In addition to skewing the country's age distribution, the one-child policy has probably exacerbated its dire gender imbalance. Many more baby boys are born in China than baby girls. An abnormal surplus of boys due to female infanticide had already been observed in China 
in the 1930s and 1940s. As the status of women improved in the 1950s, this practice became much rarer and the biological balance was restored. But fertility was still high at that time with no government restriction on the number of births. With the drop in fertility and the implementation of the one-child policy, the gender imbalance re-emerged in the 1980s. This imbalance is the consequence of a shortage of female births due to sex-selective abortion, a practice that is increasingly widespread in China today. It is aggravated by excess female mortality after birth because girl babies tend to be less well-fed and cared for than baby boys. The new census data show that little progress is being made to counter the stumbling trend. Among newborns, there were more than 118 boys for every 100 girls in 2010. This marks a slight increase over the 2000 level and implies that in about 20 or 25 years time, there will not be enough brides for almost a fifth of today's baby boys. Low fertility and lack of workforce. New census figures bolster claims made in the past few years that China is suffering from a demographic problem of a different sort, that is, too low a birth rate. The latest number released on April 28 show a total population for mainland China of 1.34 billion. They also reveal a steep decline in the average annual population growth rate down to 0.57% in 2000 to 10 half the rate of 1.07% in previous decade. The data imply that the total fertility rate, which is the number of children a woman of childbearing age can expect to have on average during her lifetime, may now be just 1.4, far below the replacement rate of 2.1, which eventually leads to the population stabilizing. In 2010, exactly 30 years, after the one-child policy came into force, China conducted its sixth national population census. Based on these figures, scholars have calculated that on average, Chinese women had given birth 1.8 times in their lifetime. This is not only lower than the average of less developed countries, but also lower than average level of developed countries. A fertility rate of 1.4 puts China among countries with the lowest fertility. Over time, low fertility has caused China's population age structure to change dramatically. According to the census, people in the age group of 15 and 59, which is the core working age population, began to decrease in absolute number in 2010. It is predicted that this age group will fall by 29.3 million between 2010 and 2020. This fall implies a decline in labor supply. Impact on Environment China will face serious environmental challenges in decades ahead. Many of the potential problems are connected to the size and distribution of China's population. Air and water pollution, potential shortages of fresh water and the loss of arable land to soil degradation, erosion and contamination are some of China's most serious environmental problems. China, like most industrializing countries throughout history, has focused on expanding the economy, paying little attention to the environmental impacts of economic development. Conclusion China has experienced dramatic economic growth and success since moving towards a market economy and opening up to international trade. But the changes have also brought enormous challenges, including growing social and economic inequality, environmental damage, and mass labor migration. The sharp decline in Chinese fertility, combined with other demographic shifts, has added to the challenges. Given China's enormous political, economic, and demographic importance to the world, the country's demographic future will be of interest to all of us. With this, we come to the end of today's lecture. In the next session, I shall talk about another related topic. Goodbye. Thank you very much.